Discharge of contract means moving out of the contract. So when I'm saying you are discharged from the contract, that means you have already performed or you are not required to perform it anymore. Like imagine somebody getting discharged from hospital. That means that person is done with the hospital. So discharge of contract means you're done with the contract. So discharge means termination of a contract by discharge of contract. The rights and obligations of the parties come to an end. So when we are saying discharge, that means whatever rights and obligations you had because of the contract, those things are over. This is a termination, right? This is what we mean by discharge. Now, there are different ways of discharging a contract. One is by performance. The other is by agreement. The other is by breach. Then there is some material alteration. Then if, if it is because of lapse of time, if there is an impossibility or even uh, the law can say by operation of law, that is also there. So we are going to look into all these provisions of discharge, how a party can get discharged from the contract. So the first one is discharge by performance. Now this we have already covered performance means doing what you're supposed to do. And if you have already done what you're supposed to do, that means you are discharged from the contract. Now it says discharge by performance takes place when parties to a contract fulfill their obligations arising under the contract within the time specified and in this manner prescribed. So whatever the provision was, whatever you were supposed to do at whatever time and whatever place, all those things, if you have done the way you're supposed to do, that means you're done with the contract. You're not required to do it anymore. So you're discharged. That is the scenario. Now, if only if one party has perform his prom obligation, then that only that party will be discharged. The other party is not getting discharged, right? So that is again simple. Whoever has fulfilled, they get discharged. The person who has not, the party who has not performed their promise, they are not discharged. They are still, you know, yet to perform. And then the other party can again file a suit also for breach of contract because they haven't performed. So that is their performance means if you are done with whatever you're supposed to do, that means you are discharged from the contract, right? Next it is discharged by agreement. Now, what is an agreement? Agreement is nothing but two person agreeing on two parties agreeing on something. And because of they are agreeing on something, what whatever it is based on that agreement, there is a contract we are saying. So if the contract is the result of an agreement, that means something that has started a contract that can also make contract come to an end, right? So the rule says that a thing may be destroyed in the same manner it is constituted. So if it is constituted by an agreement, it can be even destroyed by an agreement. That is the general rule. The contract starts with an agreement which binds the parties. So a further can also discharge them further agreement can also discharge them. Now this agreement can be expressed or implied both the ways. So we are not saying that it should be expressed only. It can be implied also. Now, what are the different ways of agreeing? What are the different ways of discharging the parties? That is also there. So these are the different scenarios. We call them innovation, recession, alteration, remission, waiver and merger. Now, what are these provisions? Let's, let's just look into these things one by one. So the first one is innovation. Innovation means substitution of a new contract for the original. Novation means no, the word novation means like it's, it's relatable. It comes from the word new. So novation means just making a new contract. We can say renewing of a contract. The existing contract gets over and a new contract takes place. So the parties get discharged from the existing contract for from the original contract, which has been substituted by a new contract. So now you are buying to perform for the new contract, but the other contract, the previous one is now done. So this arrangement may be either with the same party or with different parties also for innovation to be valid and effective. The consent of all the parties, including the new ones is essential. Whoever is party to the contract, they must agree to it. The subsequent or second agreement must be one capable of enforcement in law. The consideration for which is the exchange of promises not to enforce the original contract, right? So now you will say that the new contract must have a consideration also that consideration shall be that the original contract would not be performed that can be of course in consideration so the original gets discharged because that becomes a consideration for the new one that is how we get discharged from novation now after novation another way is recession recession means cancellation so when you're cancelling the agreement, it can also happen like you can cancel. So if you're simply cancelling a contract, that would also lead to discharge. Uh, this refers to uh, cancellation of all or some of the material terms of the contract. If the contracting parties mutually decide to do so, the respective contractual obligations of the parties stand terminated. If you have agreed to cancel, both the parties have agreed to cancel, then their rights and obligations would also be remaining, will remain cancelled, right?
that is the scenario next it is alteration alteration is simple imagine you have certain clothes which are not fitting for you maybe you have bought something new which is not fitting to you so what you can do you can go to a tailor and get it altered that is what we mean by alteration alteration means changing something recession means cancelling but alteration means just changing it like like we can give you an example like you bought something you bought, let's let's imagine you bought something from amazon after buying it you have an option either what you can do is you can simply exchange it so exchanging for a new one would mean novation or other thing is that you can get it altered you can go to a tailor and get it customized that is alteration or you can even cancel it right you can always ask for your refund that is also there if you're asking for refund it would be which one recession right that is what we mean so alteration refers to a change in one or more of the terms of a contract with the consent of all the contracting parties alteration results in a new contract but parties to it remain the same now if you are changing it then novation can be there but if you are not changing then it would remain alteration only here the assumption is that both the parties have to gain a fresh uh, both the parties are to gain a fresh but different benefit from the new agreement now next one is remission remission means the acceptance of a lesser sum than that was contracted for remission means you are accepting something less than what you were supposed to get that is what we mean by remission now what is remission it means the acceptance by the promisee of a lesser sum than that was contracted for or a lesser fulfillment of the promise made as per section 63 every promisee may remit or dispense with it wholly or in part or extend the time of performance or accept any other satisfaction instead of performance so if promise is accepting less than what he was supposed to accept that is something called as remission that means let's suppose i was supposed to give you 1 lakh rupees for the car i am buying from you but i am saying that can you accept only 90000 so 90000 if you are ready to accept that means 10000 you have remitted you have forgotten so you are accepting less than that that would also lead to me being discharged from the rest of the amount right that is also means uh discharge of contract and one more thing that is there at the end is called waiver waiver means waiving off the complete right the term waiver implies abandonment or relinquishment of a right you are just leaving it like you take it as it is like instead of if i am i'm asking for you i'm begging to you that i can pay you only 90000 you, you are so merciful you are like okay forget don't give me even the 90000 that would lead to waiver where a party deliberately abandons the rights under the contract the other party is released of its obligations otherwise binding upon it that is what we mean by waiver now here is there are two points actually the second paragraph where it is starting like uh, the second part of the first paragraph that is about remission so just make sure just look into the notes it is given in detail in the notes here there is some mistake remission is not separated from alteration it looks like remission is part of alteration but remission remission is different from alteration right that is waiver next way to get discharged it by lapse of time now what is time time we have already seen sometimes time is in a sense and how do we know that it has been mutually accepted or it seems though that time is essence without which we cannot perform so a contract stands discharged if not enforced within a specified period called the period of limitation now if it is not performed the contract is not performed within the period of limitation then it stands discharged and how do we know what is period of limitation for that we need to look into the limitations act 1963 which prescribes the period of limitation for various contracts for insurance period of limitation for exercising a right to recover an immovable property is 12 years and right to recover a debt is 3 years right so that is an example contractual rights become time barred after the expiry of this limitation period so that is something called as time barred debt accordingly if a debt is not recovered within 3 years of its payment becoming due the debt ceases to be payable and it is discharged by lapse of time so if the time is over time is expired then that is how also you can get discharged but if after the time being discharged time being over the period of limitation being over and you being discharged after that also if you promise to pay then it will be again something as new binding upon you right next it is discharged by impossibility of performance now what is performance uh, what is impossibility of performance sometimes after a contract has been established something might occur 
the not at the fault of either party which can render the contract impossible impossible to perform or illegal or radically different from that original undertaken section 56 of the indian contract act clearly provides that an agreement to do an act impossible in itself is void so we are saying something which has become impossible which is impossible to perform itself that also means discharge so something that is impossible that means void that means there is no contract in itself so there are two scenarios for that one is called initial impossibility and another one is called subsequent impossibility so if it is initial impossibility that is void in itself that does not mean that does not make it a contract so the first paragraph of section 56 lays down that an agreement to do an impossible act in itself is void this is known as initial impossibility or we we call, we call it as void ab initio so if something is impossible to do like if i'm promising to bring you know stars and moon to you that is something impossible to do that promise would not stand itself as valid so it is void from the day one so if it is void that is something called as initial impossibility that is also if you are saying you if you want to go to the court you can go but that court will of course see that the court is not uh, the uh, the promise is not binding and the party is already discharged because that was something impossible but the catch is with the subsequent impossibility which is also known as supervening impossibility impossibility which arises subsequent to formation of a contract which could be performed at the time when contract was entered into is known as subsequent or supervening impossibility now how can this be sub subsequent or supervening impossibility if something which we were you know supposed to do but now we cannot do like i can give you an example let's suppose we entered into an agreement like i entered into an agreement to sell liquor to you right sell alcohol to you now at the time this contract was formed alcohol was legal but one fine day what happens tomorrow or not the government of maharashtra puts a ban on liquor now this liquor would be banned in maharashtra and this contract was for maharashtra only now if the liquor is banned the contract becomes impossible to perform we cannot perform because whatever we are performing that is illegal the law says that it is impossible to perform so that also leads to discharge of parties from the performance because something which we, pr we promised at that time it was valid but now it has been void like it is impossible so something becoming impossible also leads to discharge now let's have to look uh, let's uh, we need to look like what are the things that led to supervening impossibility because of which subsequent impossibility can be there if it is impossible from the day one that will be void but if it was possible but later on it becomes impossible what are the possible reasons one is destruction of the subject matter of contract like if the subject matter itself is not there then how can it happen like we let's suppose we enter into an agreement like i enter into an agreement to buy your house now tomorrow what happens there comes an earthquake and your house is not there anymore from tomorrow onwards so the subject matter for which we entered into a contract the subject matter itself is destroyed now so that would also lead to discharge why because it is a supervening impossibility or the other term for supervening impossibility is subsequent impossibility that is there then non existence or non occurrence of a particular state of thing so something on which our agreement was based on something on which our contract was based on something on which our performance was based on now that thing does not exist or now that the thing which was supposed to happen or which was supposed to occur it's not occurring so that also leads to discharge then the other thing is death or incapacity for personal services like the classical example i was supposed to perform a dance for you now if i am not there any more i cannot perform that also leads to discharge because i am done next it is change of law or stepping in of a person with statutory authority now i gave you this example of alcohol if alcohol becomes illegal it becomes banned so that is what it is because of change of law or stepping in of a person with statutory authority if law is statutory appointing somebody to do something that would also lead to discharge and last one last but not the least is outbreak of war if there is a war that would also lead to supervening impossibility certain things are not allowed in war so war can also lead to subsequent impossibility right this is these are a the few examples of impossibility which comes later on after the contract is formed and if the impossibility is there of course you cannot perform that means you are discharged next it is impossibility of performance is not an excuse we are saying that if it has become impossible it, it should not be an excuse you get discharged 
but just because it is an impossible can you take an excuse can you make an ex- excuse out of it so there are certain scenarios where ex- it, it it does not stand to be an excuse impossibility of performance is as a rule not as an excuse for non performance yes it is a rule but you should not be taking an excuse of out of it because there were some people who were taking excuse that this is not possible for me to perform it i am incapable of performing it so there are certain things which does not count under impossibility what are those things uh in following cases a contract is not discharged on the ground of subsequent impossibility it was impo- if it was impossible from the day one then it is a different story but later on if it becomes impossible that would not lead to discharge what it is first one is commercial impossibility commercial impossibility means i'm not having money to pay you like at the time we entered into a contract i had money i was in the capa- uh, capacity to pay but as of now i become insolvent i don't have money like insolvent is a different scenario it is like an altogether extreme case but let's imagine like i'm saying i don't have money it is impossible for me to pay you does it lead to discharge no because that is something called as commercial impossibility that would not let me discharge let, let me get discharged from the contract that is something there second one is difficulty in performance if i'm saying it is very difficult i cannot perform it it will also ne- not lead to discharge third it is strikes lockouts and civil disturbances something like this is happening that would also not let anybody get discharged if it was a war then it is a different scenario but civil lockouts internal matters strikes lockouts these will not discharge anybody failure of one of the objects if your object fails and you say that it be, it has become impossible because we are going with something different the object was something different now it is def- dif- different that would also not let you discharge from the contract so these are certain exceptions of impossibility impossibility means yes if it is impossible you are discharged but impossibility on these four grounds it will not let you to get discharge right now what happens if the impossibility again effects of supervening impossibility one is when the performance of the contract becomes impossible or unlawful subsequent to its formation the contract becomes void yes if something is impossible to do that is void we have already seen section 56 para 1 says with something which is impossible from the day one it is void but something which becomes impossible later on that is also void under para 3 when one person has promised to do something which he knew or with reasonable diligence might have known and which the promisee did not know to be impossible or unlawful the promisor must make compensation to promisee for any loss that promisee sustains through the non performance of the contract under section 66 para 3 so what this para is what this provision is trying to say something you knew from the day one that whatever you are promising you would not be able to do but the promisee did not know if i'm promising to you that you know i would be doing this thing but i'm, I'm not in a capacity to do it and you believed it that i can do it so or if it can be identified with a reasonable diligence that would not say i now if you are occurring any loss after that because of my promise you should uh, like i should be compensating for that so if the promiser promises something which he knows that it is impossible to be done but promisee believes it later on if promisee occurs any loss because of that promise promiser has to compensate for that promise right that is the provision 2 third provision is when where an ag- uh, where an agreement is discovered to be void or when a contract becomes void any person who has received any advantage under such agreement or contract is bound to restore it or to make compensation for it to the from to it the from f- whom he has received that is also there what is it section 65 is trying to say like we are saying that there, because of an impossibility the contract has become void now if in the process there is some benefit like before the contract becomes impossible like we entered into an agreement to, like i entered into an agreement and with you to buy your house and for that house tomorrow that house gets destroyed because of an earthquake now it is impossible because the subject matter itself is destroyed but in case i would have given some advance to you now it's your responsibility to return that advance to me because it is discharge of contract right because of impossibility now the next way to get discharged is by operation of law now operation of law means the first provision under uh, like uh, by operation of law first thing is unauthorized material alteration of a written document a party can treat a contract discharged 
if the other party alters a term of the contract without seeking the consent of the other if it is by both the parties being consent that would be alteration that also leads to discharge from the rights which have been altered but other rights would be binding but if it is only one party which is making an alteration the law says that because of this material alteration the contract of the other party is now discharged the second point is insolvency insolvency means your debt is more than your assets a discharge in bankruptcy a discharge in bankruptcy will ordinarily bar enforcement of most of a debtor's contracts if i am not having any money to do anything how can i pay you so that is why i told you insolvency is an extreme scenario because insolvency also leads to discharge third is statutes of limitations now what is the what are these statutes of limitations a contract stand discharge if not enforced within a specified period called the period of limitation so if there has been a limit and you are not exercising your right within that limit the within that period that also leads to again something called as discharge and this period of limitation you will get to know from the limitations act 1963 contractual rights become time barred after the expiry of the limitation period accordingly if it, again same thing which we have already seen in case of you know by the agreement where the uh, time is over that is also there in this scenario also it is again a part of operation of operation by operation of law or uh, it was somewhere uh, over <laughs> sorry discharge by lapse of time so by operation of law also time lapse of time is there and by lapse of time it in itself discharge is used in both the things again it was a repetition of the same it is not something different fourth is merger what do we mean by merger a contract also stands discharged through a merger that occurs when an inferior right accruing to party in a contract amalgamates into the superior right ensuring to the same now if there are two rights and the first right is merged into the second one so the first one gets automatically discharged because if i'm doing the second one the first one gets automatically done now for that instance i have given one example a hires a factory a uh, factory promises from uh, a hires a factory premises from b for some manufacturing activity for a year but 3 months ahead of the expiry of uh, lease purchases that of lease a purchases that very premises now again what happens what should i do now what what should do with the what should i do with the lease now if i'm saying that if i'm already buying the property which i have taken on lease that means my lease is already over i'm not supposed to perform anything so now there is a superior right to it that means the lease is now merged into the second contract the first contract is merged so the i get discharged you get discharged from the first contract now since a has become the owner of the uh, building the rights associated with the lease subsequently merged into the rights of ownership that is something called as merger of rights now next one it is discharge by accord and satisfaction to discharge a contract by accord and satisfaction the parties must agree to accept performance that is different from the performance originally promised it may be studied under the following subheads as accord and satisfaction now what are these accord and satisfaction like what do what are we trying to say it can be accept, uh, accepted from what it was originally promised now for that we need to look into accord and satisfaction and accord is an executory contract to perform an act that will satisfy the existing duty and accord suspends but does not discharge the original contract it suspends so what is the difference discharge means you are done but suspends means temporarily you are done because we are saying it's an executory contract executory contract means it is yet to be performed but it has been accepted so some way it is partially discharging we can say partially dis uh, getting discharged from the contract that is accord next is satisfaction satisfaction is the performance of the accord which discharges the original contractual obligation so once you are according according means you are uh, something you are accepting so if you are accepting that is occurred that will be executory contract and it dis, uh, dis suspends the contract for temporarily like temporary discharging is the first step but when that occurred is satisfied then it becomes discharge that means when it has been performed if the obligator refuses to perform the obligee obligee can sue on the original obligation or seek a decree for specific performance on the accord decree means order from the court so that uh, obligee like the person to whom 
the performance have been obliged like the obligor has promises and if he has refuses to do so of course he can get a contract for a specific performance because it it has been already occurred for that right so that is there next it is discharged by breach of contract Be breach of contract means you're not doing what you're supposed to do you have broken the contract that is what we mean by breach breach occurs where one party to a contract fails to perform its contractual obligation or the performance is defective you are not doing what you are supposed to do or you are doing something which is not acceptable a breach of contract does not per se bring a contract to an end the breach may give to the aggrieved party the right to terminate the contract but it is for the non breaching side to decide whether or not to exercise that option the party who has not breached like if i am buying a car from you i have paid the price but you haven't delivered that means you have broken the contract not me so if i have paid the price i am done i have i am already discharged from my side but since you haven't delivered you have broken the contract you are not discharged now i can file a suit for you right that is what we mean by by breach the one party gets discharged the party who hasn't broken the contract the non breaching side they get discharged the aggrieved party has a right of election that is to say it can choose either to affirm the contract or to terminate it however once the decision is he has been taken it is in principle irrevocable that is there that i cannot change it whatever decision i'm choosing to what i can choose either to affirm the contract or to terminate it that means either i to i am accepting whatever you have done or i'm just terminating it it is up to me after that of course the parties get discharged now again breach is also of two types one is something called as anticipatory breach and the other one is called actual breach now what is this anticipatory breach and actual breach breach means you are doing some uh, you are not doing something what you what you are supposed to do so also known as breach by repudiation anticipatory breach occurs when one party stakes uh, states before the arrival of the date fixed for performance without justification that it cannot or will not carry out the material part of the contractual obligation on the agreed date or that it intends to perform in a way that is inconsistent with the terms of the contract now what it is anticipated breach means i am not yet supposed to perform my date of performance hasn't come yet but before that date has come i'm telling you that i will not be able to perform like uh, the promise that i will pay for rupees 1 lakh for you to buy your car now before we have decided that i will buy your car on 1st of january and today on 1st of november itself i'm telling you that i cannot buy your car anymore that means what i have already broken i have made it clear that i will not be paying the price that means the contract which we have agreed for which we have entered into i am breaking that contract so if i am breaking that contract this will be called as anticipatory breach why anticipatory because i am not yet obliged to pay i am obliged to pay you only on 1st of january but i am telling you much before so before the performance is required i have already broken it so this may also occur when one party by some action makes performance impossible for instance a after agreeing to sell his car to b on a fixed date sells it to c now this is again something impossible like the contract between you and me that i have promised to buy your car that means you have also promised to sell your car to me but instead of selling it to me you have sold it to somebody else before you sell it to me so that would also lead to breach because you were in the possession and ownership of that car but before you sell it to me you have sold it to somebody else so now when the performance the date of the performance the time of the performance comes you will not be able to sell me sell, like sell the car to me at that time also it leads to impossibility so that would also mean anticipated breach because before itself you have done so in both the ways it is there anticipatory means the part contract has been breached before it is to be performed that is something called as anticipatory breach the next one uh, before we get into the actual breach let's understand what happens with the anticipatory breach the effect of anticipatory breach where there is an anticipatory breach the non breaching party may either the non breaching party has two things either resign the contract resign means cancel the contract or treat the contract in force and wait for the time of performance in first case 
it can immediately sue for damages that is it is not required to wait for the time for performance to expire so both the scenarios are there what i can do is like if you have sold the same car to somebody else which you were supposed to sell me sell to me on 1st of january and i got to know so what i can do either i can cancel the contract immediately and i can file a suit but the second scenario is i can wait till the time is there like i have given you have promised to sell that car to me on 1st of january so i can wait till 1st of january also both the possibilities are there both the options are there for me so that is the effect now there is something called as actual breach what is actual breach and anticipatory breach was something before it was supposed to uh, be performed it has been broken but actual breach means actually being breach uh, broken on the date so actual breach refers to the failure to perform contractual obliga obligations when performance is due failure to perform obligation is the most common form of breach where a seller fails to deliver the goods by the appointed time or where although delivered the goods were not up to the mark in respect of quality or quantity specified in the contract that means breach like we entered into buying and selling of car so on the date if i am not able to pay money to you but you have delivered the car that means i have broken the contract or if i have paid the price you are not able to deliver the car that is also breach of contract or even if you have delivered the car but the car is not in the shape or size which we have agreed you have given a damaged car to me the engine is not working the car is not functioning at all but with the car we agreed for it was working so if the things were specified and you are not giving me the subject matter which was specified the way it was specified that also leads to actual breach right now what happens because of actual breach breach is described as a method of discharge although it may not automatically discharge the contract breach of contract leads to two main remedies namely breach of condition and breach of warranty now what is breach of condition breach of condition is a major term known as material breach which entitles the injured party to damages and gives it an option to treat the contract as subsisting or discharge so condition means something which is important without which the contract cannot be performed like if the car itself is damaged we are talking about car the very basic idea of car is to start and to function and to let people move from one place to another but that car that you have delivered to me there is no engine in that car so how can i say how can i call it a car without you know an engine being installed inside now what would you call it isn't it a breach of condition because it is an important it is a material condition so this is a major term we can say breach of condition is a major term known as material breach which entitles the injured party to damages yes i can always claim for damages and gives it an option to treat the contract as definitely it leads to subsisting or discharge of contract and uh, then what is breach of warranty breach of warranty is a minor term known as non material breach like it is not so important if like if we are talking about the car if the car had some scratches the car we agreed for it didn't have any scratches but the car that you have delivered is having some scratches but because of that scratches i cannot say that you know the car is not acceptable it can be accepted but yes it is damaged so that is breach of warranty not condition if it is not functioning at all then it will be breach of condition because we agreed for a functioning car but what you have delivered is functioning but it has certain scratches which we were not supposed to have that would lead to again a breach but breach of warranty rather than condition so breach of warranty is a minor term known as non material breach which entitles the non breaching party to damages it does not have the right to repudiate i cannot you know repudiate means uh, what we can call it as uh, i am not accepting it i can say that you know i can deny it so right i do not have that right to deny although a non material breach can give it the right to defer performance until the breach is made good i can always say that i will accept your car only if it is fixed you have to remove those scratches you have to put a new polish or whatever it is however you fix it but i don't want a car with the scratches that i can do but i cannot say that i will not accept it i i yes the performance can be deferred or i can say that you give me money i will pay you only less because of the car being scratched because i need to put some money for scratches also so that thing is there that can be done however once the breach is remediated the non breaching party must go ahead and render its performance minus any damages caused by the breach that is there 
if it is condition can in con case of condition i can reject the car that i will not buy but in case of warranty i cannot do that i can just say that i want claim for my damages or just fix the damage whatever it is fix the warranty so that non material breach can be fixed after that the performance can be done it can be just deferred so that is there right it is clear from the above that every breach entitles the injured party to treat the contract as discharge it must be shown that the breach has affected a vital part of the contract and that is a breach of condition rather than breach of warranty right every type of breach means anticipated breach and actual breach this is all about discharge of contract